Alright, welcome to episode 11 of the series Start With One. And in this series, uh, I'm teaching you how to develop websites starting from the absolute bare basics beginning. So, this is episode 11, and in episode 11, we are going to write our document page. And so, we're finally getting into the HTML. Uh, in the last episode, we did our content planning, which is what you see over here. And so, we figured out what are our goals. Um, what do we want the user to do, what sort of content uh, do we need to gather together and then we prioritize that content and then we just sort of laid out the content sections that we're going to need and this is the information really that we're going to be working with in this video. <coughs> so I've stripped uh, our index.html uh, file just of everything except the title. So we're starting with a blank document, and that's what you see over here. You know, it's just, there's nothing on it except for the title is my name. So what we need to do is we need to create these different sections. And remember that we actually have a header tag, and we have a footer tag. So those two sections we can just knock out very, very quickly. So we come into our body. Remember, anything between the body tags is going to be output to the page. So then we just put our header and we close off the header and then we'll just put our footer and close off the footer. So we have uh, our header and we have our footer taken care of um, and now we need to create some of these uh, these two internal sections. So we're going to have uh, two sections one is going to be for the personal profile and then we're also going to have a contact section which we can also use uh, for a contact uh, a section like this um, one thing we might want to do is turn this section here into an article because it actually has uh, it actually has some semantic meaning uh, as an article. There'll be a photo and a personal bio and a little header that says, you know, about me, something like that. And then we want to wrap all of that inside of a main. Remember we talked about the, the main being um, whatever you put inside there is going to be uh, this is the main content. So you have your header, you have your footer, and then here is going to be where your main content lies. Um, just to let <coughs> any screen readers or any robots know that, hey, all of the main content is going to be in this section here. Um, and when we save and we go see, unfortunately, nothing <laughs> has happened uh, because we haven't put anything anywhere. And what I want to do is start to fill out some of the information. Um, so the personal profile uh, is going to have a photo and my personal bio. Uh, the header, I think, is going to be a really good place to put my name in lights. Big, bold letters. So for big, bold letters, we're going to use a heading 1. And one of the things to remember is that... <coughs> Your heading one should be the most important uh, piece of text on the page, especially the first one, because it has the most emphasis. And you shouldn't be using a lot of heading ones. This should be a page title or something letting the user know, hey, this is the main idea of the page. So whether that's in a hero section or whether that's just running across the top of the page, uh, this should be sort of the title or you know what this page is really about and this page is about me so I'm just gonna put my name in there you can put your name if you want and now when we save we got a nice heading up there uh, and that's all we're gonna put right now for the header um, in the article section that's gonna be the personal profile uh, so in this section we're gonna have a couple of different things we're going to have an image. Uh, remember, that's our image tag. 
and then we're also going to have a personal bio so that's going to be fitting inside of some paragraph tags now I don't I don't have a bio written for me actually I do let me just see if I can pull that up let me pull up my personal bio this is from my own uh, personal website so let's just put this in here um, let me just put the paragraphs first and then we'll mark it up okay so this is a sort of personal bio from my own personal website um, where I keep a lot of links to things projects I do and stuff so for each of these paragraphs we're just going to come in and put our paragraph tags now uh, you need to get used to copying and pasting uh, when you're writing HTML or CSS so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go down to every paragraph beginning and I'm just going to put that in to every paragraph beginning copy this go to every paragraph end and just put that in there much easier than typing everything uh, and then I want to create the right spacing for myself just so I can see all the paragraphs lining up, all the content inside this article is lining up here, even though it's overflowing over here. Once we get into using um, a text editor, like a real uh, code editor, then all these things will be pushed over and it'll be a nice neat line right here. We won't have this overflow, but uh, you know, using Notepad is fine, but it doesn't give you a lot of formatting here so uh, we also need our image remember our image is found let's see our image is inside of our assets folder so this is our index file so maybe we have to go into assets and then img and then this is profile photo dot uh, jpg so one easy way to do that would be to <coughs> um, go to properties and then you can just sort of copy um, from here on assets slash image slash pro or yeah slash profile photo dot jpeg um, or if you just remember you can just say source equals assets slash img slash profile photo dot jpg and remember that we should put some alt text so this is a photograph of um, so this is not actually me um, that's me but um, this is just a, a photo, so it's you could say a man, because <clears throat> that's what it is. It's a man sitting in a chair with his hands clasped. Uh, so now we have our our image, and I have my text here for my personal bio. And let's just go ahead and save that now that we have that section here. And now you can see we have the image and we have the text now one thing that I want to remember is that I had some priorities here so my personal in, uh, profile information personal bio uh, and then photo of me this is the stuff I think is more important than the photo so because I want that to be the most important thing on the page you should lay out your page top to bottom with priorities so I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to cut it Control X and I'm going to come here and I'm going to put it um, before my image so whenever I save that and go back you'll see that my text is up here before my image okay so uh, I like this better because it's got my name it's got about me and then you can still see the image it doesn't have to be 
pa pow like right in your face, you can tell that, you know, oh, there's something to scroll down to, right? So it's not like we're losing anything, but we're also gaining the fact that this is going to be the first thing that people uh, see about you. And uh, what's our next section? Our next section is our contact. Um, so we're going to come in here. And the first thing that we need is an anchor link. So this is going to be our email link. And I'm just going to say contact Brian or email. Email Brian. Now I'm going to show you a special link. So normally we would say something like, you know, we would normally have a URL like this, right? But when you're uh, wanting to put a direct email link, um, this doesn't work because a direct email doesn't have a, a URL per se. So there's a, a special uh, href reference, I guess, and it's called mail to and with a colon. So when we say mail to, then we put the email address. So So we say mail to, so we're going to mail this to brian at highwaywebconsulting.com and then our text that's going to be showing is email brian that's going to have the underlined uh, link but as soon as someone clicks this it's going to try to open up whatever is your primary mail client so if um, Outlook is your primary it's set as your primary email client on your uh, computer then it's going to try to open Outlook um, if you're on a phone and Gmail, like let's say you're on Android, and Gmail is your your primary email um, output app, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it, then it's going to open that up, uh, and then it's going to show this in the to line because you're mailing it to uh, that URL or that email address. So when we save, we'll be able to see that down here, and you can see that it's going to mail to that. So now I have, um, it, it would be Outlook or whatever on this uh, PC. So uh, that's nice, and that's going to be right there. Uh, we're going to run into some issues I already know, because this is an inline uh, element and I want to have something underneath it so I'm just gonna wrap that with a, a P tag we could also use um, we could also use a div uh, if you wanted to divs are sort of non-semantic um, and because they're not semantic now it's gonna put some space around this so not too much space but uh, did we save that? Okay, but it creates a block level element that goes all the way across the page. That's the main part that we want. If this were a p tag, there would be more margin because a div it doesn't have any uh, inherent margin, but a p tag does. You see how you get that margin on the top and the bottom. Uh, so the p tag is going to give you a little bit more styling, and it's it's appropriate because this is text uh, that this could be a paragraph, right? So we'll just leave it as a p. And then the next section is going to be called, uh, it's for our social media links. And um, so we want to put icons and text for, uh, that's what I want to have for my social media links. You could just have text if you wanted to. Um, now this is going to be a navigation, so we're just going to use our nav element down here, our HTML5 um, semantic tags because that's what it is it's going to be a navigation and then inside of our navigation I just want to create an unordered list now this is typically how you might uh, create a navigation is with an unordered list it allows the user to <coughs> um, tab through all of the list items 
So it gives you some like really good inherent qualities. That's why we use uh, lists for our navigation. So we have our list items and we're going to have, let's say three uh, social media accounts. And the first one we're going to say is my Twitter. And the second one is going to be YouTube. And the third one is going to be Facebook. So um, we could just leave it like this. If we save it, you can see what we'll have. So you can see here that we have an unordered list with our bullet points and it's got Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. So that is going to be um, where we want to send people to, but we want to make those into links, right? So we need to make this an ahref. Remember we can we can put these links uh, nested inside of these list item elements. And uh, my Twitter is this twitter.com slash Brian Hafferkamp. And so if I save that, now you'll see that this is a link. And it's going to go, you can see the link address there goes uh, right to it. And if I click on it, it actually does go to uh, my Twitter account. Okay, so that's nice and easy peasy. And let's just go ahead and copy this because that's what we want at the beginning of each of these. And then, um, you know, what is my my channel doesn't have a name on YouTube it has a has the original channel number so let me put that in there it's like a a long code and then we need to make sure that we close this off and so we're gonna save that and that's gonna go to uh, YouTube let's we'll check that link to make sure <clears throat> okay, so you can see here, uh, going back to YouTube, and then uh, Facebook. It's going to be facebook.com slash JB Hafferkamp. And we need to close off our Facebook A tag. We'll save, and then now we have our Facebook. Maybe it's not. Let's see. Um, well, let me figure it out over here. page okay so this is our profile um, just as a hint you probably shouldn't reach out to me on Facebook I don't use it very much even though I do have it I used it a lot uh, in the past but um, I've sort of moved on to Twitter. Okay, maybe there was just something wrong with that link. Okay. Uh, it should pick up here uh, to my Facebook page. Yeah. Okay, well, it's connecting. Uh, that's my Facebook page anyway. Oof. Facebook has taken over my... Taken over my computer. Okay, one of the things I want to do, when you click this and it goes to the other page, you see how it opens in the same tab? What I want is to be able to keep this uh, tab open 
and then open these links in another tab in a different tab so instead of having to go over here and create another tab I want to do that automatically and we have a property uh, an attribute I'm sorry um, in our a tag that we can use uh, to tell the browser how to open this link what to do with the link and that's called the target attribute so the target is going to be equal to something and if you want to open it into a new tab then it's going to be underscore blank so that now when I save that and refresh and I click on Twitter you can see that it opened a whole new tab and we still in our first tab we still have our um, we have our website and then the second tab uh, we're opening up into a new tab so let's just uh, copy and paste that into all of these so that anytime someone clicks on this link they can just close the tab to get back to uh, our page they won't have to go back 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 uh, because if they go to our let's say let's say they go to my Twitter feed and they spend 10 minutes on it there it's not going to be very easy to get back to uh, this personal profile page and they may not want to but they at least have an easy option to get back to that so let's just go ahead and save that and we'll put that here and then you know we can check it so YouTube same thing um, and then Facebook same thing it's opening in a new tab <clears throat> So we have our links uh, prepared and ready. Uh, we have our main email link and that really is it. In the footer, um, we could do something like having a P tag and we'll say uh, we want to do a copyright 2019, something like that. Um, this just signifies that everything on here is yours and if anyone tries to steal it you know you can say that it's been copywritten you own the copyright at least in the United States you own the copyright if you write it and it's original and you haven't taken it from somewhere else uh, verbatim then you own that copyright so um, I'm going to show you a little instead of um, writing out the word copyright there's an HTML symbol that you can use and it's um, an ampersand and then copy and then a semicolon so if we save that that's sort of uh, just an HTML uh, code that you can use that gives you the copyright symbol so we could say copyright 2019 and then give my name uh, and then that, that's down in the footer. So anything that we write on here is going to be um, explicitly under uh, copyright and what year um, I wrote it. Uh, this also helps sometimes uh, if you wanted to put something like um, last updated August 2019 and you want to have something like that. Uh, this sometimes helps with a web page, especially if it's going to be something that is um, sort of static and not updated a lot all the time. There's not the assumption it's going to be updated all the time, but this lets people know, hey, um, this guy's keeping this up to date. This is not all of this information is relevant because it's been updated very recently. And if it hasn't been updated in three or four years, you would know that this maybe this uh, information is a little bit more stale and not something that uh, you can count on per se. Uh, so that might be something that you want to to add into that as well. You can even make that we can make that its own line. Get this all right here. So you could even make that two different uh, lines down here so you can see that uh, this will be our footer information um, okay I think that's what we got so we have a uh, title of the entire page we have some text that people can read we have, they can see the image very quickly and then there's contact information down here 
Um, what I want to do is to show you how to uh, add the um, icons. So there's one in particular that I like to use and you can search for it as material design you can see it there iconic font uh, material design is um, Google's design system that they've created uh, so you see it all over Android and all of this is done using their material design uh, so all the drop shadows and the the different ways you see how the drop shadows are on there all of this is part of Google's material design including all of these uh, icons these different icons that are up here and so um, this person has created the material design iconic font and so it allows you to take icons um, in this icon set and you can use them in your website so they're all the ones that are maintained by Google for material design but also some additional ones and brand icons and things like that so they they scale uh, very well and so you can make them big or small or whatever it doesn't matter they're not like normal um, if you download or make an image you know you have to make sure that your image scales very well uh, large and small but these are already created for that and they're easy easy to add to your website now they do uh, cost you a little bit not in terms of money but they cost you in terms of like downloaded download speeds uh, but it's not a lot especially for a website like this um, where you only have three icons and it's not that much uh, to go out and to bring them into your website so uh, I don't think it's going to be a, a very big deal so in the getting started um, setting it up is easy and so all you do is paste the following code into the head section of your site's HTML so I'm just gonna copy this control C and then let's make this spec here and remember we come to the head section of our website now part of what we can do in the head section is that we we bring in uh, our CSS files and we bring in some other different things uh, that we can do for our website um, sort of hidden uh, they're not output to the page but these are hidden elements that are linked to from your website and they're done right at the top so the first thing that the uh, the browser sees is the document type and then it starts going through your head and then outputting or going to get those resources that we call from the head section so we're gonna put this in here and literally just copy and paste it and now this is going to bring uh, this material design iconic font into our web page so on this web page we'll have access to all of these fonts now if we go up here I mean all of these icons so you can see all these icons um, all throughout there's lots of different stuff uh, different notifications and for persons or files or if you had an editor comments uh, we'll be using the uh, there's some for maps you've seen these probably before uh, date and time so little calendars and clocks and then this is the one that we'll be using with the social media so you can see all of these social media uh, platforms they have their icons there that we can easily bring in and there's audio and video so if you needed play buttons or stop buttons things like that and then there's some extra ones so we're gonna focus on the social uh, section because remember we want to bring in um, icons for our social media so the way we're gonna do this we need Twitter first um, if you found yourself up at the top of the page and you couldn't find it you can just do control F um, on, in um, Chrome I'm using Chrome and then you just put in what you're looking for and that control F does a find on the page so that makes it super easy I'm not going to use the box one I'm going to use just the regular uh, bird and after you get up and running you can place the icons just about anywhere you want to with the eye tag so if you remember earlier on 
in the very beginning I was talking to you about using I for italic that's what we used to do a long time ago when we didn't have a lot of formatting options with CSS uh, but now that we've removed italics um, essentially from you should be removing that from <laughs> from the HTML and if you're using EM for emphasis that'll give it an italic uh, style but that's not exactly the way that you make something just italic the reason that well one of the things that happened was we removed italic from the HTML and now we've inserted I for icon so a lot of icon fonts you'll see them use the I tag just like this so I'm just gonna copy it and we literally come into our HTML and we put it wherever we want to now we want it to go inside of our um, we want it to go inside of our anchor tag right next to our text I want it to be right before our text I don't need that space but I do need a space between them so now because we have we're calling in our icon font when the page loads now we have access to the icons um, so I'm just gonna say control S for save and then I'm gonna come back and you'll see down here that our little Twitter bird uh, shows up so now our icon just comes right in there just like it's regular text and we can style it uh, just like a link just like regular text uh, so this gives us a lot of power um, to be able to do that it only has to get brought into the page one time and we can use it as much as we want on the page itself um, it doesn't load every single time that you see an icon it only loads once at the top of the page so uh, we need Twitter we need YouTube um, can get rid of that because we're already here let's see the YouTube one that I like is the YouTube play I like the play button so I'm just gonna copy that I'm gonna come over here to YouTube I'm gonna add that and then the last one is Facebook and I'm gonna use the Facebook box it feels better to me so we put that in there right before the word Facebook and then now when we save we come back to our website now we have all of our icons here so uh, this just helps people to identify what it is if they don't read English uh, they can know what these Twitter Twitter and YouTube and Facebook icons are you can also hover over you can see down here that it tells us what the link uh, destination is and I think that's pretty good right there um, I did want to show you uh, something else so once you start writing code and you can see that it's getting pretty uh, it's getting pretty all over the place and sometimes it's hard uh, to tell even though you can see things lining up it's sort of hard to tell what section is what um, so I'm going to show you we have a way of commenting our code so that when someone else comes in and they read the code a human reads the code they're gonna see the comments and they're gonna be able it's a way for you to communicate either with your future self or to communicate with someone else uh, about why did you do this where did this come from how can you change this uh, just giving some direction and instructions um, and one helpful thing is to just sort of separate out your code um, for you visually when you're scrolling through it to be able to see what is uh, what is what so our first part um, what do we want to comment out uh, so this section here this will be an easy one um, is going to be our contact uh, contact section now the way that we write a comment is that we do an angle uh, angle bracket and then we do the exclamation point which is shift one and then two dashes and a space so that starts it and then what ends it is a dash dash and then closed angle bracket so every comment in HTML looks like this now you do comments in different ways if you're using 
uh, it likes different keystrokes if you're using uh, a content editor or some sort of text editor uh, that's a little bit more advanced than this um, usually that's control and forward slash or control and question mark um, and that'll create content or um, it'll comment whatever section you've highlighted but if you want to write it by hand it's just opening angle bracket and not one but shift one and then two uh, dashes and then put whatever you want in between uh, these two dashes and the close so you could literally you know you can do multi-line content like this contact us and that's the same as if you wrote contact us like this so whatever is between this and this is going to get commented out I don't want us and so this is the contact section we'll just say section and I'm going to use the same format I'm just going to change the text and this is going to be uh, not the contact section but the personal bio section and so now you see when you're going down the page oh okay this is the personal bio section this is the contact section sometimes if it's the code is pretty complicated it's helpful to come in and say um, to just copy this and say end so you know that it starts here and then as you're reading through the code you're like oh okay the personal bio section is going to end right here and the same thing with the contact section it's not always easy necessarily to see where everything ends especially if you start nesting things inside of each other so you can end uh, the contact section uh, you can even go so far as to say you know these are um, social media links and then you could come to your nav and then you could say end social media links uh, so you can either put it down here or you can move it up like this this is sort of a traditional way uh, of doing that so this section is the end of this section right and you can see that this is the beginning of your contact section and this is the end of the contact section your social media links start here and they're all of this uh, section. So feel free to comment your code however it makes sense to you. Uh, the more comments you have, the easier it will be if you come back to this in a year or two years or five years. And you're like, why in the world did I make that sort of move? <laughs> and you can, um, you can leave notes to yourself, your future self, uh, that really helps you to um, it helps you to be more organized with your code if someone else looks at this they can say oh okay you know this all makes sense to me so uh, that's commenting in HTML very important that especially when you're working with other people to comment your code uh, overshare uh, in terms of what you need to do how you need to do it where did this come from that kind of stuff um, so we could even come in here and we could say just copy that uh, URL and we'll say uh, icons from <coughs> this URL and so in our social media links we can say oh well, where in the world do these icons come from because it's not um, completely obvious the icons don't say hey I'm from such and such place but if you came back and you're like oh okay I use these um, from this and then all you have to do is copy and paste this 
uh, URL into the page and go right to wherever the icons are to get more um, or to figure out how to you know how to deal with these icons what do I do um, you can even put this up here you can uh, comment up here can put the uh, URL there so the icons are from the material design iconic font and then here is the URL you could even say you know URL that way people know where this comes from uh, you can remember that our, our code is not um, white space aware so you can sort of separate these things off too you don't have to just put them all right on top of each other um, and if we save, we have all this extra stuff in here, but you're going to see uh, that nothing extra happens in our page. So let's just save that. If something does happen, then you haven't closed a tag or something like that. Uh, so you can see that nothing has changed. Um, but if we were to look at the code itself, so if you right click almost. Um, on most browsers and you do view page source you can see that the the keyboard command is control U this is how we used to have to look at web pages a long time ago so now you can see uh, this is all of the information that we've put into our um, that we put in here it's now showing uh, inside the browser so you can see this is what our uh, comments look like so if you're looking through the code you could say oh the icons are from here this is the material design iconic font uh, here's our personal bio section here's where it ends this is the context section so you can see how putting these things in here sort of breaks up your eye when you're looking down the page <coughs> and the traditional nesting is also going to help uh, so you can see that there's an article and then inside of that is all of our elements here uh, you could put more space here if you wanted to and you can see how doing it this way is really effective because it has this little call out right next to the section where it ends so you're going down from nav to nav and you can say oh okay this is where the social media link section ends and then the full contact section ends right here so if you needed to work with this chunk of code uh, you could see that this is all together uh, you could put that this is the end of the main uh, section and you know we have our footer down here so this is sort of um, if you ever want to look at what a website looks like <clears throat> let's say you're curious about the code at apple.com uh, this is part of the beauty of the web is it gonna let me okay so you can look at the code for apple.com uh, it's right out there it's open for you to see so you can see all the things that they put uh, inside their head tag right here and they put all this stuff in here there's lots of different properties you can see that they're linking CSS style sheets and uh, all kinds of things but this is the end of the head this is the beginning of the body and then everything here is in the body now they're probably doing some more advanced uh, types of things but this is all the things on their uh, page you can see the end of the main and here's the beginning of their footer and their footer has a ton of <laughs> uh, links in it which is what you're seeing there um, okay and here's the end of the body and the end of the HTML so this is how web pages are made this is a lot of JavaScript stuff that they're adding into the page um, but for all this fancy stuff that they're doing uh, it's just an HTML page so they're getting a lot of their styling and excuse me their interactive elements and things like that from JavaScript or CSS but you can tell that it's exactly the same thing as we're doing right now so um, even the most high-end uh, design 
the underlying code is HTML. It's divs and headers and footers and main and p tags and a tags and these are the basic building blocks of even the most sophisticated websites uh, that you see on the web. So hopefully that's an encouragement to you um, and you would put your own you know you put your own information here and you'd have your own photo here uh, for your website and I'll have a better photograph of myself at some point that I'll put in there uh, but this is my actual contact information you could put yours in there uh, any social media links that you have uh, will go there and uh, I want to show you one more part so we've written our code we have a web page right here this is our uh, this is the beginning of our web page even if this were all that we had <clears throat> and we put this onto the web someone would be able to see this and read about us and see a picture of us and be able to connect with us through social media or uh, through an email um, so this in itself it looks really basic but even this is a very very powerful uh, thing to be adding into your website <clears throat> so uh, or as a website just for yourself so I'm gonna show you um, a website uh, we're just gonna do a search for it so w3c and then we're gonna say validator so let's take a look at what that pulls up so the w3c markup validation service so validator w3.org so now that we've written our HTML here, I want to make sure that we've written it well. Um, we don't just want to write our HTML and hope that we've done it well. We actually have standards for HTML. And so if I just copy this, that's Control A and then Control C. Um, so Control A is to select all. And so if we go to this uh, validation service here, it gives us uh, some options here so we want to um, you could put in a URL um, which is if your code is already online you can see is it valid and we want to check the markup of web, web documents we don't want to upload a file though we could do that I just want to directly input it in here so that's why I've copied it and now I'm just gonna paste it in here so now you can see this is all of my code here um, and there's some options down here that you don't necessarily need to, to deal with it's going to detect what is this uh, code automatically and then we just click check and then it validates our HTML and it shows us any errors or warnings uh, in the way that we've written it so let's take a look and you can see they're corresponding to uh, these highlighted sections here so the first one we only have three warnings so we've done a pretty good job uh, consider adding a language attribute to the HTML start tag so that you can declare the language of the document and you can see that it is um, they want you to put it in between um, to put a line break and then put it here and then uh, another line break so they wanted it to go between the document type and the head um, you can look at this page if you want to find out more about what they're talking about so let's take a look it's language that we're concerned with and then uh, <clears throat> um, maybe getting started oh, declaring the overall language of the page okay so always declare the default language for text um, in the HTML tag. So if we click more, maybe it'll show us uh, how to actually do that. Okay. So always use a language attribute in the HTML element. Um, it'll set a default language for the text of the document in the head. Um, you should use the HTML and not the body, since body doesn't cover the text inside the head of the document. Um, okay, I don't think you need to know that. If your document is HTML, use the lang, L-A-N-G, attribute. Um, for example, like this, this will be for French. So you would say HTML, and the language is equal to French. 
Now they're using some country codes uh, here that you can look up your country if it's not, uh, or language codes. <clears throat> so let's say Okay, so here's a reference tool for different language codes, and this should have uh, a bunch of different languages listed. So you can see here, here's the language, and here's the language code. Now my language is English, and so my language code is EN. So if you are writing, um, HTML is awesome because if all of this text here is in a different language, let's say it was in Spanish. Um, you can write all of this in Spanish, it's fine, and then your language code would be Spanish, and then Spanish is here, and it's ES. So if you've ever encountered using your language code on the web, it's ES for Espanol for Spanish. So uh, your language code would be ES, Lang equals ES. Now my language code is going to be um, it's going to be EN for English. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to put a new HTML tag. Uh, you shouldn't put it with the document type. Uh, you should just put a new HTML tag here and say lang equals and then for me it's going to be EN but you would put whatever language uh, primary language this page is written in. And so I'm just going to save that and let me just uh, do control A and control C again and we'll come back and we'll recheck um, our text so let's just do uh, let's just overwrite that with our changes we'll hit check again okay and now we've gotten rid of that warning so everything is good here that's what we added and we have a couple of other um, suggestions here so the article lacks a heading uh, that's right here and so they're saying we should have some sort of heading between this tag and the content uh, letting the user or the bot know what is this article about right what's the title and then this section also is lacking a heading uh, the section I'd, we can put a heading on there that says uh, contact me so let's just go back into our HTML and do that <coughs> Uh, this is the part right here so we're going to create a, a couple of spaces and we could do a new header just to let um, to let the user know okay this is a header section because inside of any of these HTML elements we can have a header we can have a footer uh, it doesn't just correspond to the main header of the page and the main footer of the page each of these different articles can have a header as well and a footer and there can be articles inside of an article there can be sections inside of sections etc so these are just tags to help bring meaning to the different pieces of content that are in it now we already have our h1 declared typically you only want one h1 for a page and then you begin to use the heading 2 uh, for the next level, like if you were thinking of an outline, the top uh, the top title would be uh, my name, and then after that, the headline for each major section, the header for each major section would be the H2, and then inside of this uh, article, if we wanted to have a header for each of these paragraphs, we would use an H3 and so on so you think of your uh, content sort of like an outline um, and that's how we mark up using our headings and uh, if you use a validator service um, or if you start to look into accessibility it'll tell you hey you know you skipped a level you had an h1 and then it went to h3 so you should probably have an h2 somewhere to help people understand uh, the page better so we will uh, say H2. One of the key reasons for that is even though it's going to be showing as a little bit smaller than this, we can actually make this H2 visually through CSS look like anything that we want it to look like. 
so it could be massively huge and this could be tiny um, so don't don't think of your headings as sizes think of your headings as parts of an outline so sort of a key uh, thing to understand it used to be that these were just these were the size options that we had uh, but since CSS has taken over as far as styling we can make these look like anything that we want to look like so this section is going to be um, we'll just say about me because that's really what it is and so when we uh, we come back to our text we can see you can see that stylistically it's a little bit smaller but it's still bold and um, it can be the head of our section so this section here is all together and what was the other one let's get rid of these <clears throat> the other suggestion was for this uh, section here so same thing uh, our bio section and our contact section are essentially on the same level so for a header for this one we should use the same h2 level of heading because they're not nested inside of each other they're sort of on the same level uh, if you're thinking of this in an, an outline you would have a title and then your first section would be about me and then your second section on the same level would be you know contact me uh, so we can actually just copy and paste this so let's do control C and we'll come between our section and um, our content where our content starts in our section and we'll just paste that in and I'll just simply say contact me do a save and when we come back to our section now we have a contact me and then that's going to be this section down here all right um, that looks good let's go back and let's validate our code again so we just do control A to select everything control C to copy and then we'll come back inside here and do another control A and this selects everything inside of here and then control B is going to copy or it's going to paste over all of that and we do a check again and now we see that the document checking is complete there are no errors no warnings to show so this is valid what we call valid HTML we haven't messed anything up we haven't missed any tags if you let's say you missed uh, this tag here and that's in our first paragraph let's say we uh, forgot to put a tag here and we save it and we copy it over to check and we checked it Oh, maybe because we have this uh, p tag here, it's allowing us to do this. HTML is a very forgiving language, um, so maybe that wasn't a very good one to show you. So even if you mess up, the uh, the browser is gonna <laughs> fill in some blanks for you. Uh, let's. What happens if we don't put that one? Okay. Uh, so here you can see it, it throws an error um, the header section um, the end tag header is seen but there were some open elements and then it tells you that this h2 is unclosed and it shows you right here and you're like oh I forgot to put the closing tag on that h2 so if for some reason you've you've messed up um, you've messed up your HTML to the point where uh, the browser is going to have a problem or throw some sort of error or it's not going to show something uh, then it should tell you in the validator um, hey you've got an error here there's something wrong or you need to add something so now when we put that back in there we get no no errors no warnings and everything should be good to go all right so now we know we have valid markup and there's no strangeness uh, to our code and so when we come back and we see uh, our code for real, this is our website. And congratulations, you have created a website. This is uh, what it is. And as I showed you on the, um, on the Apple website, you're writing exactly the same stuff 
that they're writing on their website. Now they're doing a lot of extra functions, they're doing a lot of JavaScript and some things that you don't know about yet. But <coughs> uh, at its baseline, if you removed all that and you looked at the web page, uh, you would see that it just looks like this. So uh, it's pretty cool. And now we have this. Um, but it's a local file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take that and to put it online on a web server. Uh, and we're going to start sort of basic with GitHub. Um, but then I'll also show you how to do it if you've already bought web hosting space uh, to put a website and you want to use that web hosting space. I'll show you how to use FTP in order to transfer your files over to uh, your web host. So uh, it's sort of a long video, but at the end of it, you should have uh, you should have a website. It should be showing uh, in your local uh, in your browser. It should be showing your local web host. I mean, your local uh, website. Uh, but you can't really share this with anybody because it's only on your computer at this point. Once we put it onto the onto the internet, onto the web, via a web host, you'll have an actual URL that you can hand out to someone and say, hey, this is um, this is a website I'm building. I'm learning how to make uh, web pages, and this is my personal bio. If you want to know more about me, you can read about me and see a photo, contact me or connect with me. And this is something that you would control uh, yourself. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below for this video maybe you maybe I haven't explained something very well or messed something up or there's something I could do better uh, please let me know uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you really like it share it with a friend or a lot of friends and I uh, also have a lot more videos at my YouTube channel so if this feels a little bit basic to you but interesting then you can go there there's some things for intermediate to advanced uh, development and um, if you've missed one of the episodes of the series, we're up to episode 11, you can click the link in the description to go back to the playlist and just sort of work your way through um, wherever you are. If you're a total beginner, start episode one. If you got the basics of HTML down and you, you could follow what I'm doing here, you know, maybe start a little bit later. Um, this series is going to continue on and we're going to keep... Uh, keep progressing where we'll begin to start moving into um, a CSS eventually and that's going to be sort of a long <laughs> a long section because there's a lot of things to think about and then uh, we'll move into a little bit of uh, basic JavaScript just to get some things on the page um, maybe common elements or common things that you would use uh, for most websites alright uh, I think that's it for this video uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.